How's it going everyone? Monster Party here bringing another episode in the Pokemon TCG series. So today I'm going to bring you a bit of a different episode. Today is going to be my first episode of my Trainer Chart in a series. Now the idea for this is that I am going to be battling subscribers from my Discord and we're going to be using different theme decks. Now there is a catch and this is going to be very similar to what I ran with getting jiggly with it quite a while ago. Is that you can only, you're going to be coming to the game with four decks and essentially you treat them as Pokemon during a Pokemon battle from the mainstream games. If a deck of your, if you lose the deck, that deck essentially gets knocked out and down to three decks. And essentially the last person standing with the deck wins the, the, wins the match. Um, there is one thing I'm changing and that's if you win, your deck has to stay in and you can't switch it out. So for example, if I were to be using the Zamazenta deck and my opponent uses the Zacian deck, I win my game with some center deck. My opponent can no longer use their Zacian deck. And in game two, I have to play with some center. Other than that, it's a normal game of Pokemon. Now, the decks, I'm the way I'm doing it is I want to match up similarly aged decks. So what I did against getting Jiggly with it was the Sword and Shield series. And we chose four decks from those five options. What I'm doing for this one is I'm using the second half of the Sun and Moon series. So essentially, you can use Unseen Depths all the way down to Tropical Takedown. Now, I didn't want to use the whole of Sun and Shield because there's quite a like disparity level between the start of Sun and Moon to the end of Sun and Moon. So I've essentially split Sun and Moon as in the middle as I can. Um, so for today's video, we're going to be using the second half of them. Now, you have to pre-select your decks before the game starts. Now, what I've done is I'm going to be using uh, I'm going to be using Soaring Storm, and this is kind of going to be my ace in the whole deck. Probably going to be one of my last ones to come out, as I really wanted to be the trick up my sleeve. The next deck I'm using is going to be Blazing Volcano, old school favorite of mine. Absolutely love the deck, and I find it a very reliable deck. Also, it's just the deck I like playing the most. Next up is Leaf Charge. Now, this is a deck that I've recently heard a bit of talk about again and interest in the deck. I think it's a really interesting deck that I had a lot of fun playing with in the past. My fourth and final deck was a bit of a difficult toss-up. I was considering bringing Torrential Cannon, considering bringing Unseen Depths, and considering bringing Towering Heights. Now, I decided to have a little bit of fun with this challenge, and I'm going to be bringing Hydro Fury. Now, Hydro Fury is a bit of an older deck, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, and I mean, this Swampert is amazing with power draw. So I figured I'm going for three really old decks, and then Soaring Storm, bit of a newer one. So those are the four decks I'm going to bring for my game. I'll pick up the video again once I match in with my opponent. All right, everybody. So my opponent's online, so let's get this started. So I'm playing against Gen uh, Jed and Jazz from my Discord. And my first theme deck, I've got to go with my favorite, Blazing Volcano. So let's see if I can win this. Again, I'm hoping I can win the first round um, because it puts me on a pretty strong footing uh, going to the second. Um, I don't know, it, it depends what my opponent brings. This first matchup, I'm really hoping I don't go into Unseen Depths because it's going to be a very difficult matchup to try and win up against. And it's Soaring Storms. So my opponent's starting strong. If I can get this knocked out early, I'll be very, very happy. All right, let's see. I want the coin flip. Um, I do want to go first with this deck. Because I want to get Pokago and Houndoom online early. This is not the best start. Alright, let's get the Hero, uh, Hero Cross down. Unfortunately, all it, it's all I can put down. Uh, it's not exactly the start I wanted. Did my opponent get a lucky start? My opponent got a pretty lucky start. Alright, let's get this hero cross down there. Tower Ball, I'm gonna hold off until next turn. Um, yeah, let me hold off until next turn and see what I draw. I'm probably gonna be wanting either a Macargo or a Blaziken from that, but let's just see what comes through. Um, this really is not the start I wanted, unfortunately. So this is gonna be a very tough game. Um, I was really hoping to get a Houndoom d down on turn two with that attack operation. Uh, the difficulty is Blazing Volcano doesn't match up terribly well against Soaring Storm because it's very difficult to get attack operation off. But even just using nasty plots to bring out the Blaziken Mokago Entei earlier is fantastic. 
Because the problem is my opponent's going to have a huge draw advantage. So this Hound Doom's attack operation is probably never going to go off. Which is quite unfortunate. So let's prof this and see what we get. Alright, that's not bad. I can time up all this and see what I can get with Slugma. Okay, I can get for cargo and I can get Blaziken, which is really good. So let's get those two down. Add them to my hand. Now all I need is the Torchic. Alright, another thing else to do is let's go for Powerful Friends. I will get a knockout on the next turn, so at least I'm playing a little bit aggressively, which is always a good thing. However, I don't have much in the back line, and that scares me. Seeing such an early dragon there really scares me. And my opponents had a really good draw game. There are already four cards in front of me. Hmm. My opponent's bench is really strong. I'd love to get this hero across his powerful friends off, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. I'm scared my opponent is Dragonite. I'm going to get hit with Tornadus next turn. Alright. Um, let's play Macargo. What do I need? I need a draw card again. Um, actually, I need another prof there. I'm going to need to get lucky with this. Alright. Uh, let's go TV Reporter. Okay, I can discard Ultra Ball at this stage. And get the Torchic down, and I can start... I think it's time to build Torchic or to build Hound. Hound Doom, I'm never going to have the cards for it. Let's build Torchic. And let's get a knockout here. Now, my concern is if they have Dragon out in their hand. If they don't, I'll be able to get Powerful Friends off, possibly. But if they have Dragon out and two energies, I'm in serious trouble, which I'm scared they do. Yeah, there's Dragon Knight. Ah, turn three Dragon Knight's a problem. Mm, my opponent's had a very good start. Do they have two energies? Probably, yeah. Alright, that's... This is difficult now. Um... Because now it's going to start doing bench damage as well, which is a problem. I'm not going to be able to get a knockout in a single attack. How many f I got no fire energies there yet, so this will be knocked out in two turns anyway, so by the time Blazing comes in, I'll be able to use Fire Starter. And hopefully charge up an Entei, which will be on the bench. Or I can use Nest Ball to bring out Entei, I guess. <sighs> this hurts. Mmm, that hurts a lot. Because it's going to take me a long time to get through that. Well, actually, I will get a KO, because Path Friends will deal 30, 30 damage this turn. So at least I'll get through that. So let's bring an Entei out. And... I can put that there. Ironically, I need a Fire Energy. Actually, next turn Copycat. Next turn Copycat sounds really good right now. Let's draw some cards. Oh, it comes back to my hand as well. It's not terrible. And let's go Powerful Friends. This really early Dragon Knight's a huge problem, though. Okay. Plays again. Once you get a uh, Fire Stream, discard the energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Alright. Um, mm, this is not Tornadus. Oh, this is difficult. Um... Ent I need Entei to deal with this Dragonite when it comes to it. Okay, so Blaziken comes in this next turn, knocks out Tornadus, puts an energy onto Entei. I copycat and hopefully get six cards. I'm hoping my opponent doesn't play any energies this turn. Um, the problem is Blaziken's probably going to get knocked out in the next turn. Because it's only going to have 110 HP left, which means it's in one shot range from Thunderous. Uh, both takes against it up very well. Yeah, no, Genjaz, 
both decks are getting set up quite nicely. Wrong place. Um, yeah, we are getting there. All right. Yeah, this is a really good setup. The problem is my opponent's got energy advantage over me at the moment. Okay. The thing is, that's not the worst scenario. And I say that because that won't get a one-hit KO on my Blaziken. Which is not the worst thing. The spread damage is adding up, which is a big problem. But it's not the worst case. Let's get that down there. Let's big molasada it. Just, just get through a bit of the damage. Uh, let's fire starter this energy onto the Entei. Let's get ourselves a fresh hand. Okay, there's a fire energy, which is what I was really hoping for there. Um, rescue stretcher, I don't need to use just yet. I got a Guzma for the next turn, which is not bad. And smooth over. Ironically, I kind of want a Shuckle. Well, I guess I don't need a Shuckle because the energy is going to be going to my discard pile regardless. Um, let's get some draws going in case. Uh, yeah, let's get some draws going. I like that. All right, nothing else to do other than fire stream. At least now I'm putting some damage on his bench as well, which is always good. Unfortunately, it's just not a knockout on the Sonata, so I'm really hoping I can draw a prof from this. Do I get it? Oh, I draw a prof. Okay, that's huge because that means I can one-shot the Tonatus, which my opponent might go out into now because they would think that I can't get the knockout. Yeah. Okay, that's quite good for me because I'm, I'm slowly clawing back in the energy game. The problem is that the Lantern will be charged up in the next turn. So I'm going to knock out the Tonatus. Lantern will come in. Lantern will knock out my players again. At that stage, my Entei should be online. Um, and that means the Entei will be able to bring out, take out the Lantern. But then the issue is dealing with this Dragonite. And I'm not sure how to deal with Dragonite. I actually need to bring out my other Entei. I think I need to bring out my other Entei this turn with Makago. And get a second Entei going. Um, it's a bit sad losing a Blaziken so early. But to be fair, this Blaziken's put in a lot of work. Uh, Blaziken really is one of the cornerstones of this deck. Um, yeah, I was wondering, because they, they draw support, they weren't able to get the Pidgeotto out early, which is a bit of a problem for that deck. Alright. The other option is I can actually Guzma this turn and go straight off the Dragonite. Because like, I'm going to be fire starting this regardless. Okay. Entei deals 140. So I will be able to get the knockout on the dragon out. Which I actually think is a bit more important than the Tornadus. I think let's do that. Let's get rid of the Dragonite. Let's bring an Entei. Let's do that. Um, in terms of my top card, I need an energy. So let's... Chuck the fire energy, which I can bring back next turn with Blaziken. Uh, nothing else to do, so let's go for Eruption. And that's a Fisherman gone as well, which is huge. So that is really good. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to be hit by Lantern this turn. Which is unfortunate, but it's manageable. Oh, it's not Lantern. Okay. I'm a bit surprised by that. I think my, my opponent's stalled with energies. Oh no, they do have an energy. Why would you not go for... I get that they're going for the spread. I 100% get that. But you could have got a knock on the lantern there. Which is a bit surprising. Alright, we clawed this game back. I'm feeling a lot better now that Dragonite's gone. Because that gives me the advantage on the energies again. Alright, let's see. Um... Yeah, Thunderstone Elo, again, it hurts, but I'm okay. I can deal. Um, I don't need to drop Prof this turn. I don't want to lose Entei. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to switch out Entei. Oh, wait. Oh, that was a mistake. 
That was a huge mistake. I forgot to do the ability first. Oh man, I don't want to do this. Okay. Oh, I should have done... So many mistakes were made there. That was big oof on my side. Um, I should have put energy there first. I'm now going to be losing Blaziken. Mm, that was a big problem on my side. Oh, man. I'm going to have to just retreat back into Entei. That was so silly on my side. I meant to put the energy down first and I just forgot. Hmm, this is gonna hurt me. All right, um... That was really silly of me. Really, really silly of me. Um... Let's just go for an eruption. Oh man, that was so silly of me. What I wanted to do was put the energy in Blaziken first, switch out, and then go for the fire stream. That was a really, really bad play. Really bad play on my side. Well, it is what it is. I just gave my opponent some breathing room, which is a problem. Because I can't knock out this lantern with Blaziken. That was really silly of me. Okay, well, I've got a Smeagol which can just get knocked out uh, while I take some time to charge up. I'm probably gonna have to bring another Entei in. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use Makaga to bring. I don't need to actually use Makaga, I can use Rescue Stretcher to bring back Entei. That was a really bad play on my side there. And then when I panicked and swapped Blaziken in, I should have used Makago to put an energy on top, then played Prof to draw the energy, which I actually needed. But, like, I panicked and made a terrible play. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Alright, I do wish, like, in an instance like that, that there was a take back button, but it makes sense that there isn't. It's just really frustrating, because then I, like, panicked and made another bad play. So, keep your head when you're playing Pokemon. Um, because our opponent's going to knock out Entei this turn. Smeagol's going to come in. I'm going to bring an Entei in. I'm going to charge up the Entei. Um, yeah, no surprise there. I'm still ahead in prize cards, so I've got a bit of breathing room. But I definitely gave my opponent... I gave my opponent a chance now. I was ahead quite comfortably, and I've just thrown that lead away. Let's go Risky Stretcher. Let's bring back that Entei. Actually, I should have brought back that Heracross. Do I have a Heracross? Another Heracross? I don't think so. No, I don't. I actually, should have brought that Heracross back. Um, let's start building into a second blaze again, I think. And let's go see if we can draw some cards. Well, I definitely drew a lot of Torchics. At least I got my, my draw mechanic back. And let's start charging up. Okay, one for Entei. One for Entei. Mm. The problem is if I don't draw... I might have to sacrifice another card. Because I have to draw an energy. Ah, this is frustrating. And there comes another dragon out online, which is a huge issue for me. I should have actually built into another Entei. That was a bit silly going into Torchic. Because the problem is now... I should have another switch in my deck. I'm pretty sure I have another switch in my deck. No, let me just do this. Let me play it safe. I know I'm cutting it down to the wire, which is a problem. There's Rescue Stretcher, which is a good thing. 
Let's go fire starter onto Entei. And I need to actually I can use Tate and Lisa. And I can use essentially switch into Entei that way. I can put an energy on top. So I can go rescue stretcher this turn and bring back the Hera Cross. And then I need to put the energy on top. The problem is I've only got two grass energies left. I need, need to draw one of them, otherwise that Hera Cross is useless. Then we go for eruption. And there's a fire energy, which means the last card's a Blaziken, which means this is a bit of a dud of a torchic, but it is what it is. I should have actually brought the Entei there. I got a bit greedy. So basically the question is, do they have Dragonite and three energies? If they do, it puts me in an awkward position because it means I'm going to have to sacrifice Heracross. I'll probably end up sacrificing torchic actually. Because that puts me in a really awkward position. And of that play, I presume they do. Yeah, they do. Alright. Um, man, that one bad play may have just cost me the game. Oh, man. Really irritating. Okay, um... Yeah, I'm getting knocked out this turn. Thing is, I don't think I have enough time... I don't know if I have enough time to actually charge up another Entei. Because the Fisherman's in the discard pile. So, which means their energy game now is going to be very difficult. Because they're already seven energies down. Essentially eight energies down. They're going to be losing three more here. So, there's 11 energies down. They've still got three prize cards. And they've still got six cards left in their deck. Uh, they've played one Cynthia. So, I'm not going to... There's no chance they're going to deck out. Unless the last Cynthia is a prize card. Oh, man, I'm so frustrated, frustrated about that play. It just seriously cost me. Okay. I'm gonna bring in Houndoom. Because it's also got a one retreat cost and I might be able to use Nasty Plot. But I don't think so because I need to get that Entei online as soon as possible. So I'm gonna let Houndoom go down. Mm. Let's let Torture go down. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um. Okay, what I need to do is I need to bring out Ento. I then need to draw Ento. Play Ento. Charge up Ento. Now the only issue is... I'm an energy short. I'm an energy short. I don't know how to do this. Man, that one play could have just cost me the game. I need to not lose Torchic this turn. I basically, I can't lose Torchic this turn. I'm literally going to nest ball to draw a basic Pokemon just to thin my deck slightly and then drop Sightseer and discard all of this bar Lily. Actually, Lily, the thing is, I don't want to Lily because I don't want to draw into these cards. 
And I feel like my chance that I'll be drawing four cards with Sightseer. And hopefully one of those will be an energy. Mm. Oh, this has turned out to be a really tough game. That one really bad play of mine has cost me. Comes down to whether they have the energies this turn or not. The nice thing is my opponent has to spend a lot to get rid of this Torchic. Are they gonna do it? Because the thing is they're losing three energies to get rid of this Torchic. Which is a really good thing for me. A really good thing for me. Because they're now down 13 energies. And a fisherman is there. And I'm having a complete brain fart and I can't remember the deck runs two fishermen, but I'm pretty sure it does. I have to go into Inter. I have to go into Inter. Alright. Oh yes, we drew a fire energy. Okay, that's huge. That goes there. For the sake of anything, I'm just going to be charging up this hair across just in case. Alright. Um, nothing much else to do. Let's just go smooth over. Let's put the energy on top. And I really hope I hit one of their energies that I left in the deck. Now let's go eruption. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was super lucky. Alright, that's the first win to me. Which means I have to play Blazing Volcano in the next game as well, which is a bit of a problem because there's lots of really powerful water type decks. But, hey, that's not bad. So, I'll pick this up again when we start our second match. Alright everyone, jumping off into our second game. I have to play Blazing Volcano again, so... <laughs> let's see what comes through. Um, really hoping to not see something like Unseen Depth, but... It will see what my opponent brings, as I have to play Blazing Volcano again, which is what makes this challenge really difficult, is that if you win a game, you're stuck with the same, the same deck, so your opponent can essentially outpick you, and yeah, there's Unseen Depths. Not really a huge surprise there. Um, it's what I would bring into this matchup. So... Not a great start, again. Oh man, this is going to be tough. This is going to be super tough. Hmm. Nest ball into Slugma. At least get that going. Uh, da, 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 where is Slugma? And then I may as well get that down there. And go for a tackle. Now if I could draw a prof on this next turn, that would be pretty good. Oh, please don't have an Empoleon in your hand. If I put on turn 3's Empoleon, I'm going to be... S um, I'm basically it's GG. It's 100% GG. If it's a turn 3 Empoleon, it's GG. Um, yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. Especially not with a start like this. I don't know if I want to bother charging up this Heracross. Okay, direct dive, it can't hit my Heracross. So that's at least something, but they will get rid of my Macargo. Which is unfortunate. Um, so let's get that down there. I didn't get another basic Pokemon. Um, I kind of want to go in into Entei, but I kind of don't want to either. Um, I'm considering Copycat. Honestly, I think Copycat's my best bet. Nothing else to do, so path for friends. 
I forgot to attack. That's unfortunate. Uh, I am uh, sorry. Oh, you gotta be joking. Turn 3 Empoleon. That was turn 3 Dragonite, turn 3 Empoleon. What? <sighs> the problem is not bubble hold. My Heracross does nothing. Yeah, this is game. Man, what are the chances? That's really unfortunate. Um, yeah. I'm not... Yeah, well, I guess it, it does make sense because you can stop up a hold this next turn. Ah, oh, that's so frustrating. It's so, so frustrating. Turn 3 Empoleon. Let's get Entei. Let's get Slugma. Um, I can't even Guzma. I'll hit the Entei and Macargo. Yeah, but you got a really good start getting Jet and Chest. Really good start. Um, let's go for a prof. Just get some draw support and hopefully some damage off next turn. Because I, the thing is, I can Guzma, but the problem is then. So the thing is, direct dive makes a lot of sense. That so does a uh, bubble hole to get rid of my cargo, because that makes my Entei so much weaker, and my Entei can't go for. Um, can't go for eruption this turn. I'm going to put my energy there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth over. And I'm going to bring out a switch. To try and at least get some damage down this Napoleon. We're then going to prof. We're then going to switch. And... It's the best I can do. Fire Fang. I am going to get knocked out. Um... Wow, this game is just not going in my favor. I don't know how to bring this game back. I needed the burn to stick. Because here comes Bubble Hold now. Doesn't matter which Pokemon I play. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go Guzma this turn. I need to buy myself some time. And... I guess we do that, and smooth over into another Entei. And that's it. Man, my opponent had such a great start. I was really hoping they didn't have an energy. Direct dive, Makaga goes down. The problem is now they just hit my bench. Uh, Ente, Lily, nothing. Yeah, now this is game. That turn three Empoleon. <laughs> really adding insult to injury. Yeah, that turn three Empoleon's GG against this deck. Um, there's nothing. There is absolutely nothing I can do. Ah, that's really frustrating. Really, really frustrating. But it is what it is. Nothing I can do. Well, we're going to be 1-1 one, one very soon. Um, I think I want to go for... I'm trying to think what deck would be better against this. Uh, prof. 
the sake of profiting and energy. And pass. Yeah, this is game. Um, I wonder if I want to play the Skeptar deck into this. Or if I, I might need to go straight into Storing Storm to get rid of this deck. I think I need to go straight into Storing Storm. Alright, I'll think a bit about it. Uh, think a bit about it and then we'll go into the next game. Alright, had a little bit of a think and I think I need to bring out Soaring Storm. Um, the problem is I need to get rid of Unseen Depth. It's such a powerful deck and I can't risk that happening again like in turn 3 Empoleon uh, later down the line. And I feel okay going into um, Soaring Storm. I am concerned my opponent is running Towering Heights, which is a bit un will be a bit awkward. Uh, do I want to go first? Yes, I want to go first. But let's see. Uh, can we get better starting hand? Apparently we can't. Um, it's not terrible, but it's really not what I want to see, especially going first. Okay. <laughs> that an opening hand with the Empoleon again. Alright. Um, man, my opening hands today have been terrible. <sighs> yes, I definitely want to draw a card. To be fair, I've got a Dragonite ready. Which is not a bad thing, but it's not what I want to have so early on in an active spot. Thankfully, I can switch out very soon. Um, I think I will be switching out this next turn because I can Pokemon Fan Club into Thunderous and Tornadus and then get going from there. The only issue is I'm very worried about draw. Very worried about my draw situation. Okay, let's Pokemon Fan Club this. Let's bring out the two heavy hitters. Now, the question is, which one I want to go into? I really want to go into Tornadus, but I think that the smart play here is Thunderous. So let's do exactly that. Let's go into Thunderous. Let's evolve that. Let's get this energy down. And... Yeah, let's pass. Now... Here's hoping my opponent doesn't have Gold Duck. Confusion Wave is not great either for me. So I play Dragonite in this next turn. I attack the energy to Thunderous. It's not really the energy I wanted. I want two Lightnings on it, but it is what it is. Oh, don't play Fionn. <laughs> Because they're going to Whirlpool suction me. I don't get the point of Scampering Tail. If your opponent hasn't fixed the draw, it doesn't matter. But anyway. I've never understood it. Because often you'll see people use it. I was kind of like, what's the point? It's still a random card. Okay, they didn't go for Fear on this turn. Um... We'll play Grimer because I might need to actually switch out. Let's get that there. 50% chance of getting a KO. Let's see. Okay, cool. I get a KO. And... Not exactly what I wanted, but I guess it's something. The issue is now, I actually need to retreat this uh, Thunderous. But I don't want to because I want to keep the pressure up. That's my problem. Hmm. So I'm very, very quiet. I'm trying to think what to do now. So, my uh, mindset is I'm scared of attacking with Thunderous again. Because I need Thunderous for Empoleon. But at the same time, if I don't have something better coming, if I don't have a good draw on this next turn, I'm in trouble. I don't want to go into Grimer because if my opponent gets the Empoleon online, I'm pretty much screwed. And there's the Empoleon. So I can't go into Grimer, because then they just get my bench the whole time. Man, my opponent's getting really lucky with the Empoleons today. Um, I need Thunderous for Empoleon. But Thunderous is now in Empoleon's one-shot range. So putting on the bench doesn't help. The problem is I've got an absolutely trash hand. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this energy there. I'm going to go for an attack. Ah, it's frustrating. It's fair, but it's frustrating. Because the issue is I need that attack to go through quite badly. All right. If I can draw another energy, I can Dragonite the Empoleon away. Which would be a really good thing right now. The issue is I need to get that energy. I'm scared to I'm scared to not commit the Dragonite because if I don't, it's just gonna hit on the bench the whole time. Bubble hold? Yeah, bubble hold. Alright. The nice thing is Dragonite can get the KO now because of energy recycle system. But now I'm seeing the issue where I've got Dragonite to my active spot with five prize cards remaining. Which is a huge problem. Let's take this back to my hand. Let's use Hurricane Charge. But the plus side, that's Napoleon gone. Which is huge. Huge for me. But I'm still not sitting in a great spot. Um, let's get those. Alright. It's a good thing, but it's not a great thing. Because I'm still not in the best of positions. I'm most likely just going to retreat this Dragonite into Grimer. Or well, they'll do it for me. Okay, so here's my conundrum, right? Is... If I've got a gold duck, I don't want to give them Grimer, so I'd rather go into Tenardus. Because if they had a gold duck, they could knock out the Grimer. If I draw an energy now, I can knock out Psyduck. I didn't draw an energy, which is a problem. So let's just put that there. I got nothing better to do. Knuckle punch. And hopefully we get some draws going. I don't know what is happening today, but yeah, my draws are really bad. It's a bad matchup, yes. It's a bad matchup. But so are my draws. My draws have been awful. Oh, okay. Um, best case scenario right now is top decking energy and not hitting myself in confusion. You know what? I need to stabilize this game. Retreat into Grimer and collect. I actually, I need to stabilize. Okay, there's energy. It's already looking better. I need. I really want to get a Pidgey out for airmail. Um, I don't like playing slow against Unseen Depths and giving them a chance to get a second uh, Empoleon out. But the problem is, with these draws I'm having at the moment, I need to stabilize. I need to get my hand... I actually need to get my hand back up again. I'm seven cards behind my opponent. Which is... Rather significant. So I'd rather sit with Grimer and draw up some cards at the moment. Um, I know I'm lightening up on the pressure. But... The thing is, especially with being confused, there's a 50% chance of wasting my turn and just taking extra damage for nothing. I'd rather sit back and play the long game. Which this deck is good at doing. Yeah. Um... Yeah, why not? Alright, let's get this energy down onto... Uh, let's go down to Thunderous, I actually think. And let's just collect. Alright, Pokemon Communication's good because I can bring out a Pidgey. Which is really good for me. Uh, maybe we shouldn't play the Dratini. I was thinking of boarding into a second Dragonite, maybe. But that was actually a bad play. Because I want to get a Chincho down for Lantern. 
And I want to get Pidgeotto down, obviously. Okay, it looks like an Napoleon's on its way, which is a big problem. Um, yeah, that's a really big problem. Okay, I'm getting Pidgey down this turn. Pidgeotto will come in next turn, so at least my draws are getting better. Um, in terms of what I want to do next... I basically need to draw a switch and draw an energy, which obviously will never happen. Um, there's an the energy, which is a pretty good thing. So what I can do is I can put... <laughs> I don't want to charge this up because of... Empoleon. Let's put that there. And let's bring out Pidgey. Uh, I don't know what to do. Um, I'm gonna do that for now. It's a bit of a weird one because like I got energies in a whole bunch of different places, but I kind of need to just have options open right now because I'm really scared that my opponent has a Empoleon on their hand again. <sighs> Man, another Empoleon. Okay. Because the issue is they can knock out more t my Tornadus, which is a big issue. But if they do that, Thunderous can come in and should be able to knock out the Empoleon. Obviously, depending on what my draws are. I'll need a bit, uh, I will need to bring out Lightning Energy, but it should be possible. There's a Golduck, which is a bit unfortunate because that's going to be a KO. That is rather unfortunate. Because I can't just knock out the gold duck. Mm. What to do? What to do? I don't want to bring up Thunderous because Thunderous deals so much damage to Empoleon. Tornadus doesn't deal enough damage to gold duck to warrant it. And Dragonite is not exactly charged up right now. But I guess Dragonite's our best bet against Empoleon. I'd rather keep a Dragonite. So I guess let's go for Thunderous. And hopefully I can draw Lightning Energy. That is not Lightning Energy. Let's drop that there. Can we draw Lightning Energy? No, we cannot. Let's draw Lily. I'm going to play Lily. I'm going to go for Tate and Lisa for a new hand. And I just really, really hope I draw a Lightning Energy. Okay. Um, because I can now go Hurricane Charge. I can put the Water Energy on Dragonite. The lightning energy onto Thunderous. And I can go for Raging Thunder. Which will knock out the Golduck. And Pidgeotto can take some damage. Any damage they'll deal with will be in the KO anyway. So that's fine. Oh, there's the Pidgeotto. Now I'm sitting in a pretty decent spot. Because I've essentially got a Dragonite... Ready? I need to draw one more energy, but it's in a pretty good spot. And the Empoleon can either knock out the Thunderous, which is probably what's going to happen, or put damage onto my bench, which is not that useful. So I'm probably going to be seeing my Thunderous going down here, and if I'm not mistaken, this is my second Thunderous, which is unfortunate. Which means Tornadus is next to useless now. Um, which is a bit sad, but it is what it is. Um... Alright, what's happening? Empoleon knocks out Thunderous. Dragonite comes in and knocks out Empoleon. They're probably going to bring out a Golduck on the next turn. I really need to draw Fisherman. Alright. 
My issue is, is then keeping a dragon eye charged, which is an issue. Well, there's another Tornadus, which doesn't actually do anything for me. Let's draw, do a draw three, hopefully drawing into a water energy. We drew into a fisherman, which doesn't help us this turn. And this is fine, I guess. All right, we play that. And then we hurricane charge to play that. Um, we then Pokemon communication, the Dratini away to bring out that Pidgey. Let's get Pidgey down so I can go into Pidgeotto on the next turn. And let's go for a Dragon Impact. All right, and let's... Uh, yeah, let's do that, because I can Fisherman them back next turn anyway. Alright, maybe I can keep this Dragon Out fed. If I can keep Dragon Out fed with energies, I've got this game. It's just whether I can do that, because I just need to get two more attacks off with this deck. I must say, I wasn't actually hoping to go into Soaring Storm so quickly. I was hoping to bring this in, like, in the third or fourth game. As in, like, my third or fourth deck. Uh, I really didn't want to bring this in as my second deck, but I had to get rid of Unseen Depths. Ah, man. There's Whirlpool Suction. Mmm. The thing is, I'm kind of giving them a KO regardless. I'd rather bait them into taking out Tornadus. Tornadus does nothing for me at this stage of the game. The thing is, without the Thunderous, Tornadus is next to useless. So, let's let that go down. I'm actually okay with that. It's not the best thing in the world. Obviously, I prefer my opponent not to knock it out. But, it's the best of a bad situation. Because I'd rather keep the Pidgey for the Pidgeotto. The Dragonair, they wouldn't knock out. Please don't Whirlpool Suction again. Okay. Oh, right. Sorry, it doesn't actually pick up the knockout. Okay. That's even better. Okay. I can go Pidgeotto there. I can go... Let's draw a card. And let's draw Grimer. I'm not going to use either of those Pokemon. Let's use Pidgeotto. Let's draw. And let's say hello to a water energy. Um, let's feed Dragonite. Now, the nice thing is, I don't need... Um, I don't need to play Fisherman this turn, so I can actually play Lily this turn. Let's get the Tornadus down. And let's play Lily this turn, because then next turn I can Fisherman. Alright, not fantastic, but not great. And let's go for Knuckle Punch. Alright, my opponent's saying that they probably shouldn't have used Fear on there, but... Uh... It wasn't a terrible play. Terrible play. Yeah, it wasn't the best play. But it wasn't great. I mean, the damage in the Dragon Out probably would have gone further. I actually miscounted. I thought there was a knockout on the Tornadus there. Um, <sighs> it wasn't the worst play in the world, but it wasn't the best play either. Okay. Now Dragon I can come in. And let's see what we get. ML Energy. Chincho. ML Switch. Thank you. Switch has so much value in this deck just because of how expensive Dragon Art is. Um I may as well fisherman this turn. Uh, they can't knock me out in this next turn, so there's Hurricane Charge. Putting two more energies in the Dragonite. It's not something I really normally like doing, but it is what it is. Let's get that knockout there, and we go one, two... It doesn't really matter, one. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get Fioned on this next turn, but it doesn't matter because I have Switch. This actually ended up being a lot closer of a game than it should have been. Um, so well played to my opponent there. 
Um, so I'm essentially gonna have my opponent's... What is the first deck again? Soaring Storm. So my opponent's Soaring Storm is down, and this should be a knockout for Unseen Depths as well, which is huge. So I'll be very happy to see un Unseen Depths down. Um... And then I've just lost Blazing Volcano. So let's go energy and switch. And GG. All right. So that is 2-1 uh, in my favor. And I will pick up the next, oh sorry, I'll pick up the video again with the next game. All right, heading into our next game, going with Soaring Storm. So I've knocked out two of my opponent's decks so far. They've knocked out one of mine. So I'm feeling relatively happy. Um, I think I'm in a decent spot here. Um, well, what's it going to bring next? I'm really scared of Towering Heights. Um, Relentless Flame. Okay, this is a matchup. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is certainly a match matchup. I'm glad I brought the Marsh, um, Marsh Tomp deck now. The Hydro Fury deck. Alright. Not a great start. But it's not terrible either. Um, I might start with Pidgey in the active. To get Collect off. It's not something I'd usually do. But I'm fairly certain my opponent's going to have a bit of a slow start. Um, which means I don't want Dratini to be there for no reason. Uh, Dratini just... I would rather lose a Pidgey than a Dratini. Okay, they went for a bit of more of a aggressive start of the Panita in the active slot, which means Pidgey is not going to be around for long. Um, okay, going to be seeing a Rapidash most likely. I just want to get the Nidoran going faster into Nidoqueen. Queen. But I don't know, it depends what they go for here. If they're going super aggressive, which I think they might do because I left my bench empty, I'm probably going to be seeing a Rapidash here. But let's see what my opponent decides on. Um, as for my turn, it's going to be dropping the Dottini, dropping Bug Catcher, hitting Collect and seeing what I get. Um, I would like to get Tornadus and Thunderous off in this game a bit better. Um, getting that uh, bench damage. Oh, turn 3 into the Queen. Oh, man. What is with my opponent getting turn 3 stage 2s? Okay, that's a huge problem. That is a really huge problem. Oh, now I wish I went for Dottini first. All right, let's bug catch us, see what we get. Got a good draw at least. Okay, we can go Dragonite turn three, so I guess I can't complain. Um, collect. All right. Um, yeah, I guess this actually worked out better in the end. I'm really scared of that turn three in the queen though. You've got to respect it and it's just so powerful. Um, okay, all things considered, with the hand I've got, I've just got to go out into, I'm thinking of letting Pidgey drop. I'm going into a super early dragon out and trying to sweep. Oh man, <laughs> no, I wish I didn't do that. Okay, this next Rapidash agility is huge. If they don't get this agility off, there's a good chance I've won this game. If the agility fails, I've probably won this game. It failed, I've probably won this game. Because I can now go Dragonite and then knock out the Nidoqueen Queen after it. It's just going to come down to if I can keep my energies going. Let's get that there. Dragonite. Hurricane charge. One, two. One, two. And then dragon impact. One, two, three. All right, let's see what my opponent has. Um, they, if they don't have a, a basic Pokemon in their hand, they are going to have to search for one. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you really did. 
Um, they're gonna have to now search for basic Pokemon. If they don't have Switch in their hand, they're in a really bad spot right now. They need a way to get this Nuda Queen out of the active slot. If they don't, they're in serious trouble. Okay, the issue is a really early Dragonite like this is hard to maintain. And I don't have draw support on my bench. Let's see. If they don't have a switch... If they don't have a switch, I'm going to be in a good spot. Okay, I'm in a good spot. Um, there's a Thunderous, which is actually pretty good to see. Um, I have to get the, I have to get this KO. Yeah, I have to go for this. I can't let another queen sit for one more turn. Dragon Impact. The issue is now I'm probably going to have to wait. I'm going to have to switch out into Grimer and let Grimer draw me uh, draw me some cards again. Which is a bit unfortunate. Um, there's a bug catcher. That can be huge. If I get a super lucky draw. Super lucky draw. I might be able to maintain this Dragonite. But I literally have to draw two more energies. Let's see what happens. I want to see an energy on this draw and I want to see more from Bug Catcher. Okay, that wasn't what I wanted. Can I get... Okay, that... Okay. Ooh. Does my opponent have... It's not worth taking the risk, actually. I think I've, I was considering staying in, but it's not worth the risk. I'd rather, much rather do that and then just go for a collect. And stabilize again. The thing is, I was considering staying in. But I just don't think it's worth it. Yep, they had it. I'm really glad I didn't stay in. The thing is, I can fisherman on the next turn. Um... I just can't go into Dragonite though, which is the only problem. So I'm kind of just going to have to let Tornadus... Oh, uh, let Thunderous take one for the team. And... I have to play Fisherman this turn. Yeah, I was considering going for the draw three instead. But I think I have to Fisherman this turn and just play it safe. Hurricane charge, one, two, one, two. And let's drop this there. And pass. Because I can use the switch next turn. My opponent needs a basic Pokemon. And in all honesty, a switch out is not a, a retreat is not a bad option right now. But let's see what my opponent does. We both had super aggressive starts, and luckily I was able to out-aggro my opponent. Yeah, that's game. That one bad coin flip really cost my opponent there. Let's bring this out. And yeah, there's energies. Dragon Impact. Well played to my opponent. That was a really tough game. Really tough game. Alright. So, my opponent has one deck left. I'll pick up the video when we see what it is. Alright everybody, let's go into our fifth round and see what my opponent's last deck is. This is the fifth round. Because I knocked out Soaring Storm, he knocked out Blazing Volcano, I knocked out Unseen Depths, I knocked out Relentless Flame, and yeah, it's Towering Heights. It's what I was a little bit afraid of. Um, it's a tough deck to get, to get rid of. Uh, likely I do have um, the Skeptile deck in case I lose this game. Let's see. Uh, this is not great. I would have preferred his friend. I would have much preferred his friend. I do have a Switch at least. Alright. Let's see what my opponent has for me. Hmm. Right. So, Pokemon Fan Club. 
I want to bring out two of these. Actually, no, that is a really dumb idea. I want to bring out a Pidgey. And let's go. Let's drop these two on the bench. I'm actually going to switch into Tornadus. Just because it's not it's going to take less damage and then start with Knuckle Punching. So. I don't always recommend doing what I just did. And going for the early attack against Persimmon. Because Towering Heights wants damage on the bench. I wouldn't always recommend that. Because now, for instance, they're going to look for a Thrall. Start charging up a Thrall and then the Thrall is going to be dealing a ridiculous amount of damage. Now, the reason I did that is because I knew that they had the Pop Toad on the bench. So I knew they had a way of doing it themselves. And I know for the for a fact that Thunderous Tornado is not going to get a pick off on Persimmon by itself. Which is why I went for that damage. And the fact that Thrall can't knock out my Tornadus in one hit without assistance. So it's not a play I would always recommend because it's very dangerous putting early damage onto Towering Heights. Um, I'm a bit surprised I didn't charge up Thrall there, but it is what it is. These are not great draws. And then another Knuckle Punch. Because now I can knock out the Persimmon. I'll be a bit surprised the Persimmon stays in. Because I wouldn't be surprised seeing them stop out for Palpatode. And start going for Mini Earthquake. Yeah. Um, because now they've got damage on the bench. They've got the Thrall going. This is going to be a tough matchup. Because my opponent's bench looks very scary. Because they've got a Gabite. Which is very close to evolving. And that is a problem if I'm playing aggressively. They've got a Thrall and they've got damage on the bench, which means Thrall is powerful. And they've got a Palpatode in the active spot, which is hitting for 40 damage a turn. Granted, this is going to take them three turns to get through me. But that's also putting more damage on their bench. And that's getting more time for charging up that um, Gabite there. Again, these are not good draws. Let's go for Thunderous Tornado. Alright, putting some more damage on the bench. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to pick up any knockouts from the bench because, mm, sorry, the bench is quite tanky. There's the, my opponent's literally gotten a stage two Pokemon, I think in every single game on turn three. What in the world? What is this? Oh, that's going to be a knockout on Tornadus. How is my opponent so lucky? <sighs> oh my word. Okay. Um, man, my opponent has such great draws then. I've had utter garbage. Honestly, I need to collect to go off. As sad as that is, I need to collect to go off. Yeah, my opponent's won this one. Soaring Storm's gonna get knocked out. <sighs> That's irritating. Really, really bad draws this game. And some really good draws for my opponent. I can't believe a turn 3 Dragon uh, Garchomp again. Well, turn 3 or turn 4, but I'm like a ridiculously early stage 2. Oh my word. Jed and Jazz is getting such great draws. Not take away from their plays, but like the deck is working. This is not. Ah oh, man. All right. Um, I'm probably gonna have to go down for Energy Loop. And hopefully Skip Talk can take this deck down. Man, I can't believe this deck. I saw Storm just got absolutely dumpstered. Like, I know Towering Heights is good against so Soaring Storm, but I just got absolutely dumpstered this game. Don't even know how to come back from this. Mm, my only real chance is just charging up Thunderous. It's all I can do is charge up Thunderous. At least then I can knock out Garchomp, and hopefully my opponent, but my opponent won't now stall with energy because I got Scythe Toad. 
so they can fix their draws. Yeah, I don't know how to win this. I really don't. Apparently my deck hates me today. It's just like saying no. Like you don't deserve to win this game. You deserve energies. <laughs> I've literally drawn energies this entire game. Yeah, bar the one Pidgey. And I think the switch. So I think those would be my other two draws. Otherwise, it's literally just been energies. Uh, that's frustrating. That's really frustrating. Oh well, you brick sometimes it happens. Alright, so I'm gonna go to Skip Town this next game. Um hopefully Skip Town can bring it home for me. Um Yeah, well played to my opponents, it's game. There's absolutely nothing I can do. Yeah, well played. Sometimes you just draw energies and it happens. Cool. Well, there goes my Soaring Storm. So I've got my Skip Tile and I got my Hydro Fury deck. I'll start the video again when we get into the next round. All right, everybody. Um, going to the last round, I think I need to go into Skip Tile deck. I think I need to use Leaf Charge. I don't want to think of Energy Loop. I think I need to go for Leaf Charge. Um, uh, hopefully I can win this game. So I do still have Hydra Fury as my final, as like my one remaining deck after this. But I'm more likely to get the win with um, Leaf Charge. Let's see if I can do it. Because um, I'm kind of down to the wire now. I think I do want to go first this one. Because I want to get my evolutions going. Not really what I want to see. Really not what I want to be seeing. Yeah. That's two time weak to the as well. I don't know if I even should have put that energy there. Because my, if my opponent has like a prof, I'm in so much trouble now. Alright, what can I do? I can Dunsparce's Strike and Run to get the Abomb of Snow going. Really early. Um. I do want to get the Manic Track going as well. Hmm. Like, I need to use Ultra Ball, right? I don't have very good targets for Ultra Ball. It's going to come down to what I draw in this next turn, what I'm going to do. Because Dance Pass is... Uh, I don't, sudden Flash is not worth it. I have to go Strike and Run. I have to go Strike and Run. So I want to preserve that energy as well. Um, I can hold off an Ultra Ball until next turn. So let me go Strike and Run. Let me drop a Snova, which I need. I need a Trico. I need a Fur Fruit, but I can't use Fur Fruit because um, the key can knock me out in three turns. Um... Um, I'm tempted to fur through, but I think Snova makes the most sense. And I want to switch with one of the Snovas. So, the nice thing with the Snova is it deals good damage against fighting types, but I don't think I'm going to get the attack off. Like, I can do it if I... Attach an energy and then essentially bring out the Abomb of Snow as well. Um, but I don't think it's worth it. 
I think I need to focus on getting the skip talk going as soon as possible. Snow is good against literally everything else in the deck, bar Persimian and Thrall. And unfortunately, my opponent started the Persimian. I need to go into skip tower early. Mm. This Persimian start for my opponent again was a really good start. Really good start. I'm waiting for them to devolve the Gabite because they've literally gone to stage twos every single game. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, there's an argument for getting a knockout here. There's a very strong argument for getting a knockout here, especially if they do exactly that. Okay, what do I get from Prof? Can I get an Abomber Snow from this? Okay, I don't get a Abomber Snow, which means I've got to do this the hard way. So I've got to go Ultra Ball. I want to go Energy. I have to do this. Energy, Energy. And we bring out a Bomber Snow, right? We then go... Um, I want to put the Lightning Energy there. And then I want to evolve that a Bomber Snow. Put this energy to Snova. And then hit Snova. 460 damage. Yeah, Snova hits really hard against fighting type Pokemon. Uh, unfortunately, Persimmon doesn't have the weakness to it, but if the fighting type Pokemon is weak to grass as well, Snowbird hits really hard. Um, hopefully now my opponent... Yeah, my opponent is short on energies now, which is a... It's a good thing for me. Like, it's never a nice thing saying that, but it is a good thing for me. Um, I want to... Guzma, Dunce Pass, Retreat, Dunce Pass, uh, let's get that down, let's get this Grass Energy over there, and let's go for Ice Shards. Unfortunately it's not a knockout, but it's a step in the right direction. Uh, at least it's good damage off on it. Like, I know I could have knocked out um, the Time Pole. But quite frankly, I'd rather put 120 damage on a Garchomp. And like the Persimmon at 6 damage every turn, so it would be 2 turns regardless. I can get my neck track down this next turn, then I can take and Lisa this hand away. And hopefully get something a bit better. And just let Snow, but just deal as much damage as I can. Alright, so with the disconnect there. Alright, let's get this Manek track evolved. Um, Tate and Lisa, let's get a brand new hand, because this hand is garbage. Um, that's a step in the right direction. Let's get the neck track going. And let's go for our shards. Alright, this is looking good. I get Next one I get a knockout on the Persimian. Um, Thrall is a bit of a problem. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that. Copycat as well, not so great in this game. But at least I got a draw three as well. I really want to get Skeptile online. Uh, Grovel can... If I can draw a Grovel and go into Skeptile, that'll be fantastic. Um, because I can actually start doing something. Unfortunately, getting through this Thrall is going to be a bit of an issue now. Um, let's put that on the Abomber Snow. Draw three. Um, that's actually not bad putting that there. Again... I don't really have much when the Snova goes down next turn, which is a problem. Uh, so, just carry on going for Ice Shards. Let's get that. And we've got an Uranguru, which is not terrible. Um, it's not fantastic in this matchup, but it's not terrible either. Okay. My, my opponent has stabilized now, which is good for them. Um... A bomber snow is gonna be probably one energy short, which is a bit unfortunate because I wouldn't have mind going to a bomber snow on this next turn, but that's just not going to be possible, unfortunately. Um, 
because there's no way for me to get the enough energies on it because I'm going to be one energy short. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Losing those two energies is probably the worst thing. Well, losing one of those energies is one of the worst things about that. Um, I might actually give my opponent this dunce boss to bar myself a turn. Man, there's the bomber snow. Alright, let's draw three. No, I wish I went into Manectric. Let's get that down over there. Uh, let's get this Uranguru down. That Instruct, while it's not useful now, could be useful a bit later. And Psychic's not a bad attack. Um, it does hit like a truck. Because it's going to deal... I guess most of their Pokemon is going to deal about 100 damage. The issue is, I'm not going to be able to knock out this Thor in one hit. And at this stage, I would like to have a Skeptile online before going in with an Obama Snow. So this is not a great situation for me right now. As I'm re I'm strongly considering copycatting on either this turn or the next turn. Because I need to get Grovel and Skeptile going. Oh, that was a good early lead and I'm glad I put that damage on that Garchomp but now I'm wishing I knocked out that um, time pole. I should have actually knocked out that time pole. Like 2020 hindsight, but it is what it is. Because as nice as that is, it only really affects the Manectric. Alright, let's get Manectric down. Alright. I need Garchomp. Ugh, I need, um, Skeptile. Let's get that there. Get the Electrack down. And... Double charge. Let's charge up this Urn Guru. Thing is, Urn Guru will get a KO against this Thrall now. Which is a good thing. The bad thing is it's weak to the entire deck. And because they got Seismitoad now online, they can essentially take out whatever they need. And I still haven't got my Skeptile online, which is a really big issue, because... Ironically, your Skeptile is actually your mid-game, and your Bomber Snow is more of your closer. Um, because you want to play Skeptile before you play Bomber Snow. Because Skeptile relies on the energies from Bomber Snow. If Bomber Snow goes down first, you don't have those energies to power up Skeptile. Which is really, really awkward. Unfortunately, apparently, I just can't draw a Grovel. Um, Manectrak's 100% going down on this next turn. Twice over. Urungu will come and get a knockout here. But then the problem is I've got these two fat boys in the end. Which are just going to destroy me. I need a really good draw from this copycat. I need a really good draw. Okay. There's Timer Ball. Oh my word. Okay. Copycat. Yeah. Heartbroken. Okay. We're now sitting in a much better position right now. Like, this is looking good. Um, because I can go into Skeptile on the next turn. There's the Lantern, which is also fantastic. I'm probably going to lose Urunguru on this next turn. Which is okay. Um, it's not the end of the world. Because then I go into... So this is prize card 3, prize card 2, prize card 1. So the, these are basically my last 3 Pokemon. With a possible Lantern switch. Their last 3 prize cards for me is I knock out this Garchomp. I knock out this second Garchomp. My concern then is what they bring out next. Now, as it stands right now, I presume that this Garchomp... Well, obviously this is the active Pokemon. The next active Pokemon is going to be the second Garchomp. Now, they don't have damage on the bench, which means a Thrall is pretty useless. So what do they do? What are they searching for now? What, are they, what will fix this game for them? Because the thing is, they need damage on the bench. Okay. 
Okay. Um, let's just move another energy there. This Skeptile's gonna hit like a truck on this next turn. I don't think I can actually knock me out because they're gonna have we're gonna have the same amount of prize cards. Because this is you have to have if you have more prize cards remaining, so that's not actually gonna do anything. So let's get that down over there. Let's accelerate this. Actually, no, I need this one there. Let's accelerate this. Uh, let's play Lady this turn to make sure our hand is looking a bit better. Those are our last energies in our deck as well. So we kind of got to make this work. Uh, nothing else to do, so we're going to Powerful Storm. 320 damage. I'm okay with that. There's another Copycat, which... Honestly, I may actually play because this hand of energies is not going to be much. But at the same time, there's not much in my deck that's going to do much. Alright. Um, unless I'm missing something, Overslice is not going to get a KO. And even if it does, I can go into a Bomber Snow. Which is not the end of the world. Uh, I'm sorry. All right. Um, ironically, what I actually want to do here is switch. Let's retreat. Charge that up again, and then go for Hypno Hammer. Because now, no matter what, I'm pretty confident I can knock out their Pokemon next turn. Because now I can switch back into that Skip Tile and just hit like a truck. This is actually such a nice format to play. I'm really enjoying this format a lot. It makes it a lot more interesting. Unfortunately, you have to play with a friend to do it, but it's a really fun way to play. And it really harkens back to, like, the mainstream games of an actual Pokemon battle. This was really tough today. But a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing this. When the Earthquake won't get the KO, and then I can switch. I don't have to switch, but I want to switch. Switch into a Bomb Snow. Ach, into Skeptile. And let's go for Powerful Storm. 360. Alright. One for every day, of the uh, every day of the year. And that's the final victory. So huge, huge, huge thank you to uh, Jed and Chaz for these games. It was a lot of fun. And I really hoped all of you enjoyed this format. I had a lot of fun doing it. I think it's an interesting way to play the game. And I'm certainly going to be doing it more often with moving down the aged decks. So thank you so much for everyone watching. I really hope you did enjoy it. Please do consider like and subscribe. My channel is almost at a thousand, which is super exciting news. And yeah, you're going to be getting lots of awesome content for it and more fun ways to play like this. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Cheers. Enjoy.